Hey everyone, this is uh, Joseph Bazooka Joe Valtellini here, and this video is going to be about the low kick. And looking back at my career, it was one of the weapons I used to set up all of my knockouts um, and to ultimately finish my opponents. To me, it's a weapon that's underused in all of kickboxing, all of mixed martial arts. So this is how I teach my low kick here at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Uh, we're actually starting with a single pad drill, which is going to be very uh, beginner. Um, we're going to move on to more intermediate drills and then advanced drills. Again, looking at the low kick, um, where to land it on the shin, the timing of it, and different ways uh, to set it up in your training and in your fight. Daniels, another knee to the midsection, counter with the outside low kick by Valtellini, who has Daniels in the corner of outside low kicks executed by Valtellini. The left hooks to the body, Daniels goes down following that kick, and referee waves off the fight. So one of the first drills I like to use with my beginners, it's called the single pad drill. And what you're doing is you're doing this kick stationary. You're not focusing on moving your opponent or your opponent uh, coming towards you. So it's a very stationary attack, just focusing on landing the right part of the shin on the pad. So the two things you're focusing on this drill is taking a small step forward. You need that weight transfer in your feet. The second thing is the angle you are kicking. If you're doing more of a setup low kick, you want to use more of your lower part of your shin. As you're trying to set up a finished low kick, you're going to cut the angle down a little bit more and make sure you hit higher up on your shin, so closer to your knee. So there is a big difference between the angle of the low kick as well as how and where on the shin you hit. Now to make this drill a little bit more advanced, you want to show that you can put this low kick into combination. So in this drill here, we're just shadow boxing in the air, getting your hands flowing and mixing your kick. A good part of timing for your low kick is setting the low kick off your hands. This is what people will call your Dutch style kickboxing where you're becoming aggressive with your hands and your low kicks. You can see in the drill, I'm mixing up different hand combinations, not always throwing the same hand combination. I will throw some just with the lead hand, sometimes just setting up my one, two, three low kick. Learning how to mix your low kick within your punches is another skill you need to develop. Punch to kick or kick to punch. Now you really want to get your opponent moving. Now you're going to do something called a draw attack low kick. So I'm constantly moving back. As you see, I'm pulling back with my rear foot. This way I can create distance in my stance and I have a nice round low kick to time the step. So every time the partner steps, you want to time the step with your low kick. That is a perfect time to attack the leg. As your opponent or your training partner steps forward, at that point they can't block a low kick. So you're timing the step because it's a free low kick where your opponent can't block. Again, the key to this is making sure you draw back with your rear foot, making sure you push off the calf of that rear foot, and this way you have good space and good distance for your low kick. So now that same drill with the pad can be applied using uh, no pad. This way, again, it's a little bit more interactive and you can see how your opponent reacts to the low kick. You get a little bit more of a real feeling once you get your shin landing on the pad. And again, another drill that I like to add to this single pad low kick is making sure you take the kick high. After you go low so many times, that time is when you want to bring the kick high. Your opponent's focus is on the leg and then you mix the high kick um, in with the low kick. So here I just have two low kicks to one high kick. And again, you can watch a lot of my fights, especially with my fight with Raymond Daniels or again, Francois Ambang. Using the low kick and setting up the high kick is a very good way of setting up a nice high kick knockout. Now, you don't always have the opportunity to, to keep draw attacking and low kick. So in this drill here, we're using a high shield guard and bumping our opponent, creating space by pushing our opponent back and setting up the low kick. As you push your opponent back, they really want to ground themselves in their feet from having themselves fall back. So that is a perfect opportunity to add the low kick in. So right here, we're just using shield bump back and forth, creating distance for our low kick. 
This is something where if your opponent doesn't want to move back, you need to create space for the low kick. And one way is using the shield bump or the draw attack. This is just a different way to set up a nice hard low kick. So the next part of the drill is having your partner just throw simple jabs or jab cross to your head. And this way you're reinforcing using your shield to attack the leg. So as you're timing, and you're countering the punch with the low kick. And that's one of the safest ways to use the low kick is as your partner's punching, you use the kicks. My coach was always big on using your kicks to counter the punches and using your punch to counter the kick. This way you're not getting into those messy exchanges punch to punch. This way you can constantly protect your head and attack the leg. Again, my coach used to call it the shield, um, using your shield and attacking around your shield. So here I'm using my high guard shield and using my low kick around my shield, which is a good way to make sure you defend against the punches as well as use the low kick. The other beauty th beautiful thing about this setup is as someone's punching, they need to put weight on their leg. As they put weight on their leg, that is the perfect opportunity to land the low kick. And again, it's a free low kick. The drill gets into more of a little bit more of that intermediate level. So now what you're trying to do is you're, you're going to use the low kick. Once you find that low kick timing, you want to make sure you flow with a combination. Okay, you can't win fights with just throwing single attacks all the time. So after you find the low kick, you really need to start putting your combinations together. One of my favorite setups is after I hit the low kick, I like to flow with my hands and then finish again with another low kick or kick at a different level. So here I'm constantly adding the, the draw attack low kick, follow hands combination, and usually uh, finish with the low kick again. All right, now what makes this drill and timing into something more advanced is you're gonna add it into more of like a sparring situation. So I have my partner just throwing his hands. I'm using my head shield and defense to set up the low kick. So again, I, I'm, it's unpredictable what he's throwing, so I have to really reinforce strong head guard and low kicks. And you can see in this little bit of drilling, I'm mixing up draw attacking with shield pushes because I want to shut down his boxing with my low kicks. And again, this is the beauty about kickboxing. A lot of people feel that they need to be these great boxers where they only have to focus on their hands. But a good low kicker could really shut down a boxer with solid low kicks. And once that front leg is damaged, you don't want to keep stepping forward. And, and it sucks every time you're having to step and throw a punch when you have a low kick constantly combo breaking you or shutting down your output um, with that low kick. It's very important to know that a low kick isn't just a low kick. And it's very important to know where you land on your shin. Um, and the angle you throw your kick has a different effect. And also where on the leg you are landing. Are you landing closer to the knee, mid thigh, or up closer to the hip? So it's also very important to realize, you know, it's the timing that makes the low kick very effective. So again, we're looking at the different timings you can throw it versus a draw attack or versus a shield push, you're always creating space and distance to throw that low kick. It's also very important when do you throw that low kick and this is what I'm going to talk about. You have the opportunity to throw the low kick before someone throws their hands, during or after. So all right, we have three different timings we're looking at when trying to take the low kick off of the jab. So the first one is for anyone to jab, they have to step first. So there's a split second when the foot lands to when the punch comes. So you're basically anticipating the step to shut down the jab before the punch even comes. So as soon as he starts, boom, I'm catching him as he comes forward, I'm stopping him. That's going to stop his combination, stop him from coming forward, and ultimately stopping his hand to hitting my face. So as soon as he steps, boom, I'm stopping him, I'm anticipating his step off the jab. That's timing one. The second timing you're looking at is as the punch comes out, you want to meet it, okay? As the punch is happening, okay? The third one now is you're gonna use that draw step attack, boom, then attack. So you're hitting after. So you're looking at before, during, and after. 
Okay, those are the three different timings you want to try to set up when trying to land your low kick off of the jab. 